Well, good Sunday evening to you and welcome back to this time together that we are given opportunity to spend some time in the Word of God. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are just uh, privileged to be able to pastor a great place called Shiloh. We love the people here. Thank you so much for all of your kindness and generosities to my wife and myself. We feel very privileged and very honored uh, to be a part of leading this church family. And we are so grateful for that opportunity and grateful for opportunities such as this to share the word of God when not in person, at least by way of Facebook or by our YouTube channel. So thank you so much for joining with us for this time together. We ask that you continue to pray for those among our church family that have special needs. We want to continue to ask you to lift up Brother and Sister Long in your prayers as well as Brother Cecil that's recovering from surgery. We ask you to continue to lift up Brother Lane Mitchell in your prayers. Also continue to pray for uh, just others that are battling uh, sickness and that have upcoming uh, different things going on medically. We ask you to continue to lift up Ms. Francis Lucas in your prayers. And we know God is able to continue to meet the needs of our church family. We ask you to please lift each and every one of them up and believe the Lord to minister. Uh, we ask you to lift up Debbie Rosso in your prayers, and uh, we know that the Lord is able. We also have some others that uh, doctors have not allowed them to return, and they're so missing the fellowship of this family, and we are so missing them. You know who you are, and so we just say to you, we love you, we miss you, look so forward to your being able to return. We thank the Lord for his blessings and that we're able to carry our petitions and requests to him and so grateful that he does hear and answer prayer. I ask you to pray that God would minister to the need of every one of our Shiloh Church family members. And we know that some perhaps walking through circumstances I may not even know about, but God knows and we ask them to meet every ask him to meet every need. Of course, we continue to ask you to pray for our country, to pray for this upcoming election. We ask you to pray for those that are battling COVID-19 on the front lines, especially for our medical personnel, also for all other first responders. Pray that God would just strengthen them and protect them. Will you pray with us now? Father, thank you for the opportunity to spend time together in your word tonight by way of online. I thank you for the Shiloh Church family for their love and their generosities to my wife and myself. We love them and appreciate them more than we know how to even say. Thank you for the privilege to be a part of this Shiloh team. We also thank you for meeting the needs of our Shiloh family, whether they be spiritual needs, physical needs, or financial needs. We know you're the God that meets the needs of your children, whatever they are. So we lift all of these up to you right now that we have mentioned. Lord, if there be anyone that their name has slipped our mind, we ask you to minister to them as well. All of our family meet the needs, we pray, and even our extended families. We do pray for a miracle of revival for the United States of America. We do pray for this upcoming election. We do pray that everyone will inform themselves, pray, and then get out and vote. We ask God that you would just draw us closer to you, even through this time that we spend together in the Word of God tonight. We ask it all in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Tonight, we want to share one verse of scripture with you for our text verse, and that's found in the book of Revelation. It's taken from chapter 2, and our verse there that we're looking at is verse 3. And here's what it says. It says, And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Notice that, have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Tonight, I want us to think about the term, and I would title this, for Christ's sake, for Christ's sake. I want you to think about the term for Christ's sake, and I want you to think of it as in regard to this. When we do something and think of that we're doing it or saying it for Christ's sake, uh, I would ask you to think about that, our being obedient to Christ, um, our living out his commands so as to have a good testimony for Christ, and so that all we do may bring glory to him and his kingdom. When we think about the term, for Christ's sake, think about it in those terms. 
that I want all that I do to be done in obedience to Christ. I, I want all that I do to live my life in such a way that I am living out his commands so that I have a good testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want all that I do to bring glory and honor to him and his kingdom. That's what I want you to think about when we think about that term for Christ's sake. Now, oftentimes you've perhaps heard someone, someone close in prayer if they've been asked to lead in prayer and they're praying audibly. You have often perhaps heard them close that prayer by using the words for Christ's sake. Now, when that's done in prayer, it is in a sense asking God to look upon us based upon the merits of Christ, not ours. And I'm very grateful for that because we truly have no merits of our own on our own anyway. Any merits that we have, um, it's only because of Christ in us. When we prayed the prayer and we, if we perhaps close that prayer in, in Jesus' name or for Christ's sake, um, we are asking that the Father look upon the merits of Christ to deal with us, not to look upon our merits I hear a lot of people say, had a really good conversation. I'm blessed to have a Christian doctor. Had a really good conversation with him this this week. And, and we were talking about that. People talk about, I want justice. People will talk about, and I, I said, yeah. And people say, I want what I deserve. And we both agree. Uh, we don't want justice. We don't want what we deserve. We, we know the word. We want grace. And so when we pray, and if we close the prayer for Christ's sake, we're asking God don't give me what I deserve. Give me the meeting of my needs in grace. Give it to me based upon the merits of Christ, not my own. If he gave to me, did for me, based upon my merits, I'd have nothing. I don't want it based upon mine. I want it based upon the merits of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I also want you to consider this. There really are several things that we should do according to Scripture for Christ's sake. And so for a few minutes tonight, I want to just briefly touch on some, and I want you to think about it. Now, remember, I'm asking you to think in regards of that term, for Christ's sake. Think of it in being obedient to Christ, our being obedient to Christ, our living out his commands so as to have a good testimony, and that we do endeavor to do all that we do so that it brings glory and honor to his kingdom. But what are some other things that the Bible tells us that are to be done for Jesus' sake or for Christ's sake? Well, the first one is, and we want to ask you to think about is, we are to forgive one another for Christ's sake. That's what the Bible says. Now, in Ephesians 4 and 32, and I'm drawing here from the original King James, this is what Ephesians 4 and 32 says in the original King James Version. It says, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Did you catch that? Do you understand that God has forgiven me based upon what Jesus did on the cross? And I have been fortunate enough to hear the gospel, embrace the gospel, and repent of my sins. God has forgiven me based on the merits of what Christ has done, not me. I could never do enough to have the merits to say, okay, God, forgive me based on my merits. No, a thousand times, no, it could never happen. But so God has forgiven us for Christ's sake. And we are told we are to forgive others for Christ's sake. What do you mean for Christ's sake? To be in obedient to Christ, to live as have a good, t uh, to follow the commands of Christ to forgive, and also to forgive others so that it brings glory and honor to him and his kingdom. Let me tell you, when God's people walk in unity and harmony and love and tenderness and forgiveness, it brings honor and glory to God. If we walk in disharmony and we walk in, in uh, holding grudges and we have an unforgiving spirit, that does not bring honor and glory to Christ and his kingdom. So we need to forgive others for Christ's sake as well. We spoke recently about how that the Bible tells us very clearly and talks about forgiving others. And we're told that we must forgive others so that our Father may forgive us. We are to forgive others not only for ourselves, but for them and mainly for the sake of Christ, because that's what we are commanded and instructed to do. But let me tell you something else we're to do for Christ's sake and Jesus' sake, not just to forgive others. But we are told to serve one another for Jesus' sake. 
Now here we took look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5. In the New King James it says, For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. What's the apostle saying there? He's saying we preach Christ, not ourselves. He's saying that we are your bondservants. That, this is what he's saying. We are servants to you. We serve you. And why do we serve you? We don't just serve you for our sake or the sake of the one that we're serving in you, another human being. He says, we serve you. We become your bondservants for Jesus' sake. We have shared it over and over again, and I will continue to share it over and over again, where that the Word of God is very clear that Christ did not come to be served, but to serve. Let me say that again. Christ did not come to be served, but to serve. Should we do any less? Absolutely not. But please understand what I'm saying. I don't make myself available to serve the lost, the hurting to serve in the local church, to serve in, in sharing the gospel, preaching the gospel. I don't do that um, just for the sake of others. I do it for Christ's sake, Jesus' sake. It's right here in the word of God that we've read to you. And so we're to serve one another also for Jesus' sake. Now let me give you a, a third one that you probably will not find very exciting, but this is the word. We are even, according to the Bible, delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 11, For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. We live out our life, even if it should bring to where that we would have to face death for our testimony in Christ, so as to bring out our life in Christ in the flesh. It goes right back to being obedient to Christ, living out the commands of Christ to have a good testimony, and to do all that we do to bring honor and glory to his kingdom. Now, let me give you some words about this thought about being delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. Let me, let me give you some words of one of the um, commentary writers, Matthew Henry. Uh, you hear me mention him a lot. First commentary I've had was a Matthew Henry. This is what the, uh, what the writer, Matthew Henry, the commentary writer, spoke about when he's looking into that same chapter and kind of tying together verses 8 through 12. He said, The apostles were great sufferers, yet they met with wonderful support. He said, Believers may be forsaken of their friends as well as persecuted by their enemies, but their God will never leave them nor forsake them. He said, There may be fears within and as well as fightings without, yet we're not destroyed. The apostle speaks of the sufferings as a counterpart of the sufferings of Christ, that people might see the power of Christ's resurrection and of grace in and from the living Jesus. In compassion with the in comparison, I'm sorry, with them, other Christians were, even at that time, in prosperous circumstances. So what's he saying? Well, we know that especially in the apostles' day, but uh, don't you think for a moment that it has not continued through many all those years and still continues in many third world countries today. There are people that actually are delivered over unto death because of their testimony and refusal to deny Jesus Christ. I hope that that would never come to happen on a wholesale basis in this country, but we have even seen similar circumstances at limited times, if you stop and think about it over the years, where people had guns held to their head and were told, deny Christ, and they refused. Well, there are times that someone may physically be delivered over to death because of their belief and their testimony in Jesus Christ. But another writer went on to say it this way. He talked about, are always delivered unto death, that is, under continual threats and dangers of death, so that we always have the sentence of death in ourselves over us for the sake of Christ, for our owning, preaching, and professing Christ and the doctrine of the gospel. 
We are not delivered to death for evil doing, nor merely as innocent persons, but for will doing, and that the noblest sense for obeying the commands and for publishing the gospel of Christ. Yes, there are times, sadly, tragically, that people have been delivered over to physical death because of their testimony in Christ and refusal to deny Christ. I hope that you or I never have to actually walk in those, those circumstances, but it, it could happen. And if that were happen, I hope that you're prepared to stay strong in your belief and that I'm prepared to stay strong in my belief in Jesus Christ. But think about that being delivered over to death. Well, you can take this two or three different ways. There are always threats and persecutions if we're going to live as for the Lord and as unto the Lord. It just goes with the territory. That shouldn't be a surprise. We were plainly told this multiple times in the Word of God. But there's also a continual being delivered unto death, spiritually speaking, in the fact of, from the spirit realm, that we are constantly to be dying out to self and coming more and more alive in Jesus Christ. We are constantly be delivered over to death as far as dying out to self. That's why the Apostle Paul on one occasion talked about dying daily. So we are constantly be delivered over to dying out to self and living more and more unto Jesus Christ. But even in that, it's all done for the sake of our testimony, to walk in the obedience to Christ, to live out his commands, and to live a life so that we bring honor and glory to him. Let me give you another one. You'll probably not be greatly excited about this one either. But we're even told to take pleasure in afflictions for Christ's sake. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10, the apostle said, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. There was another occasion that the apostle declared that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be, shall be revealed in us, or the glory that be, shall be revealed to us when we get to heaven, the wonders of heaven that we see will, will not be able and worthy to be compared to the hard things we've been through down here. But the truth of the matter is, and I guess I'd like to say it this way, that we can even find pleasure in our relationship in Christ and our walk with Christ, even in the midst of walking through persecutions, distress, afflictions, trials, whatever, we can still take pleasure and find pleasure in Jesus Christ. And if you know that something specifically is being brought against you, and you know it's in direct correlation as to because you're a Christian, because you speak up for the gospel, because you live for Jesus, and you could say, I know that I was passed over for this because of my testimony in Christ. I know that someone tried to take this away from me because I'm a Christian. The apostle says, even in those circumstances, he said, I still take pleasure in those things because I do it to live out Christ for others to see him in my life. Is it easier said than done? Yes. Is it possible? Absolutely. With the empowerment of Jesus Christ. There was one occasion that the, the apostles early in New Testament um, or early in the New Testament church where they were beaten because they were sharing the gospel. And it sounds so hard for us to wrap our head around this. But the Bible says on one occasion that they were grateful. They took pleasure in infirmities, thinking that they were counted worthy to suffer those persecutions for the sake of the gospel. So again, we walk through the hard times, even for Christ's sake, as to live out the testimony of our belief in him. And then let me give you one more. The Bible even says that we should strive together in prayer for Jesus' sake. I turn back to the original King James for this reference from Romans 15 and 30. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit that you strive with me in your prayers to God for me. He's talking about a striving together in prayer. One writer stated it like this. They said, Togetherness in prayer brings strength to the believer, that's speaking individually, and to the church, that's speaking corporately. Think about that. That praying together, striving together in prayer um, for the sake of Christ, for the sake of Jesus, 
striving together brings strength to the believer individually and to the church corporately. And both of these things, they serve as a witness of unity to others, so, which takes us right back to what we started talking about, that I want you to think about that term for Christ's sake or for the sake of Jesus or the sake of Christ. Well, what happens? The writer went on to say that when we strive together in prayer, it brings strength to the believer, it brings strength to the church, and that serves as a witness of unity to others. And what are the results? He didn't list them all, but he gave a couple of good ones. This is what he said. He said, the results of us striving together in prayer to where that there's unity, to where that there's strength for individuals and strength for the church overall. He said, first of all, the results are souls coming to Jesus. And secondly, good, solid church growth. Isn't that what this whole thing is supposed to be about? Souls coming to Jesus? Yes, it is. And when souls are continually coming to Jesus, it follows behind that there's good, solid church growth, I believe, when souls are coming to him. So I want to close out tonight by going back to what I shared earlier, and I've tried to weave it like a thread through the whole time tonight. I want us to go back to where I said to think about that phrase, for Christ's sake, as in regard to this. All that we do, these things that we specifically mentioned and everything, we should do it in a way that is showing that our being obedient to Christ. We should do it in a way that we're showing that we are with his help and empowerment, living out his commands so as to have a good testimony, not just for me, mainly for him. And then thirdly, so that all we do may, may bring glory to him and his kingdom. Everything that we do, everything that we say, all of the actions that we portray, all of the servitude that we meet at, all of them being willing to be servants to others, everything. If you want to bring it home, the way that we treat our husband, our wife, our children, our family, our co-workers, the way we do our job, everything that we do, we should think about that term for Christ's sake in this sense. We ought to get up. We ought to thank God for another day. We ought to go to work and we ought to say, now, now today, God, for Christ's sake, I want to do my job so that we bring glory and honor to the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lords. T today, Father, whatever I do, whether it's shopping in the grocery store, whether it's just sharing the gospel with someone that you give me opportunity, everything, everything that I do, I should do it in the light of thinking about that term for Christ's sake, because I want all that I do to be walking out obedience to Christ, living out the commands of Christ, showing forth a good testimony for Christ and so that all that I do would bring glory and honor to him and his kingdom. Live every day for Christ's sake. When you think about it in that light, it'll change every day that we walk and live for Jesus Christ. God bless you. I love you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Look forward to being back with you this coming Wednesday night by way of online and Facebook. So look forward to the next Sunday, the good Lord willing. Uh, we'll be back together 9 a.m. for our Sunday school, 10 a.m. for our morning worship. It's going to be a great week. Won't be the same if you're not here. Please come be with us if at all possible. Hand sanitizer, face mask, social distancing, all that's going on. And so we appreciate you. We love you. God bless you. And the good Lord willing, I will see you next time. Have a great rest of this evening.